And on day number seven, Carol and Schneider said, let there be pass rush. What's going on, guys? It's a little later than I like, but I wanted to go ahead and do an end of day seven of free agency roundup video because some stuff happened today and I made initial reactions to those moves. I did a stream where we talked about all of it, but now that we've had several hours to process these two signings and the opportunity to get some idea of what the contracts might be, I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and try to sum it all up in one longer video. So, for those of you who are living under a rock, the Seahawks have today made two signings to bolster their pass rush. The first was a re-signing of Benson Mayoa. You may remember him last year getting six sacks and I think 22 QB pressures in 13 games. And they have brought in newcomer Kerry Hyder, who had been a career journeyman. And then last year he had his best year ever for the 49ers getting eight and a half sacks and I think like 32 QB pressures. So it's a pretty interesting pair of decisions. It's not the decisions that I was expecting this team to make at all. I knew they were going to bring in some help on the pass rush, but I didn't really think it was going to be these guys. So let's talk about it. And there's a lot to say about these two moves and what they represent, but for now we're going to focus mainly on the financial because I've already gone over these players. Benson Mayoa, we might underestimate him a little bit. I know he's not the greatest pass rusher ever. I know he's not a lead pass rusher. I know that in a perfect world, he's probably your first end off the bench, but he was good. And 1.7 pressures per game is, it's not Aaron Donald territory, but it's pretty good. And Kerry Hyder, look, there are some extenuating circumstances around what he did last year that make it a little curious, but... Mayoa, I'm sorry, but Hyder proved that he can at least play in this league last year, so I'm not really going to get too far into that. Let's instead make this a financial analysis. So we got some details of the contracts. We don't know everything, but we do know some things. Benson Mayoa, his contract is two years, $8.8 million dollars. Now, you may remember about a month ago, I did a video where I tried to figure out what Benson Mayo's market value might be in free agency, and the number that I came to was three years, 18 million. I, I did suspect that he might get a little less than that because it was a bad year for players like him, but I was thinking more along the lines of like three years, 15 million, or two years, 12 million, something like that. So if my findings in that video have any bear, have any bearing in reality at all, we did quite well here. Two years, 8.8 .8 million, that's 4.4 .4 million a year. So based off just the raw numbers of production that Mayoa managed last year, we're getting him at what I would consider to be a little bit of a discount. So right off the bat, this contract looks pretty good. Now, let's go to Twitter here real quick. Bill Alvstad, also known as NW Seahawk on Twitter. He gives a couple of interesting details about this Mayoa deal. So let's go through this. In addition, the Benson Mayoa contract is a four-year contract, is really two years with two additional voidable years. This allows the Seahawks to spread signing bonus over four years and lower the 21 cap hit. Again, very team-friendly. So... $8.8 .8 million over four years. That would mean, logically speaking, the biggest cap hit that we could possibly have in 2021 for Benson Mayoa is $2.2 million. Because that would be, you're spreading the uh, cap hit evenly across all four years on that contract. Now, that does mean you're going to be owing him $2.2 million in 2023 and 2024 when he's not on your team, but by that point, the cap is going to be so big, those are things you can live with, and we're seeing this team really embrace the void year. In fact, we might be using it more than about any other team. We did it with Posick. A million of his cap hit will be in 2022, and we did it with Carson. Uh, he has a, I think, 1.5 million cap hit in 2023. 
when he's not on the team either. So <clears throat> there you go. Now, if we backloaded this contract at all, his 2021 cap hit might be a million and a half. It might be insignificant. It might be basically vet minimum type cap hit. So pretty good. So we have won the contract battle with Benson Mayo, I think. I'll just go ahead and put that out there right now. Okay, so let's do Kerry Hyder. And his contract is extremely deceiving, unlike, uh, kind of like, well, a little like Mayo's contract, but I think this is, get out of here. Thank you. Uh, it's actually a lot more deceiving than Mayo's contract. Mayo's contract was a little deceiving, but ultimately it told you what you needed to know. This contract, however, is a lot bigger than it looks. It's a blowfish of a contract. It looks dangerous, but in reality, it's not. So let's take a look at what Spotrack reports. Kerry Hyder signed a three-year, $16.5 million deal with the Seattle Seahawks, including an, an average annual salary of $5.5 million. And so that looks pretty significant. That looks like something that you would pay a guy that you're counting on to be your lead or at least secondary pass rusher. That looks like a guy you're expecting to get like 30 pressures and 8 sacks. That looks like a guy that you think needs to be one of the better players on your defense. This contract, when I first saw it, I was like, well, okay, uh, I'm not exactly thrilled about this, but <clears throat> okay. However, if you take a look at Bill Alvstad on Twitter once again, you can see he breaks this down, dives into the nitty gritty of the contract, and it's not nearly as daunting as it originally looked. So let's take a look here. In addition, the contract for Hyder is very team friendly in 2021. Adam Schefter of ESPN reports. It's a two-year, $6.5 million deal that includes a third year with a $10 million base salary that voids, a source tells PFT. 2021 cap hit, likely around $2.5 million. <coughs> so, basically, Hyder is never going to see most of the money in that contract, in all likelihood. Um... Now, I am led to believe that this does not mean there will be a $10 million cap hit in 2023. If there is, that's a little messy, and I will voice my discomfort with that should we get confirmation that that's the case. But based off what we saw in the Chris Carson contract, it's it doesn't work like that. So what we need to know for now is that his cap hit over the next two years is going to be $6.5 million. So basically, this contract is two years, six and a half million. And the cap hit in 2021 is expected to be around two and a half million, so four million in 2022. And then the void year, which will probably carry some dead cap, but it shouldn't be anywhere close to 10 million. So we have really kind of made out like gangbusters here, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the finances. Even if you don't like Kerry Hyder, Two years, six and a half million is the kind of money that you would pay a marginal backup. It's the kind of money that you would pay just a guy you expect to hang around on the roster and maybe play 15 to 20 percent of the snaps and not crap his pants on the field. So <clears throat> this being the case, as long as you're willing to live with a little bit of dead money in the future, which I am, especially in the name of trying to build a Super Bowl contender, this is good. So, after having a chance to look at most of the details of these contracts, I think it's safe to say that this team continues to show a very strong understanding of how to work under the cap and get good players and get good depth without breaking the bank. So, if anybody was wondering what my final conclusions were on these two signings, I think the finances here make this a pretty easy slam dunk yes. You don't have to love these players to love the fact that we got them for this price. All right, with that, I'm out of here. There will be videos, at least one video tomorrow. If we do more stuff, obviously, we will continue to produce content. But for now, this is what I want everyone to digest. Even if you did not love the moves today, at these prices, you can't go that wrong. Peace out, go Hawks. See you guys in stream later. See you guys in stream tomorrow as well. And uh, yeah, Schneider, for whatever you can say about 
his priorities in building this team is killing it in terms of these contract negotiations.